What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you the newest features in Twinmotion 2020.2. Let's get started. Number 1. New Phasing Tool In the new update, Twinmotion now has a new phasing tool. However, the old phases have been renamed as scene states, so your old projects will still work. To use the new phasing tool, go to Media and click on Phasing. Now click on the big plus button to create a new phase. You can see that the new phasing tool is similar to a construction schedule. On the top bar, you can see the date of the schedule, and you can zoom in and out with these two buttons, or change the view mode here. You can also adjust the length of a phase by resizing it. And you can add another phase with this plus button. By default, the start date will be the current date. But if you click on more, you can choose a specific start date. In this case, I don't need it, so I can just turn it off. Now I will select the first phase and use the scene graph to hide everything except the first phase of the construction. Then click on the next one and use the scene graph again to show the second phase. I can also right click a phase and rename it accordingly. Now I can repeat the steps for the rest of the construction process. Then I can drag to navigate through the timeline and see the preview. That looks good. To apply it to a video, select the more button under the video and choose the phasing that you want. Easy, right? The cool thing about the new phasing tool is that I can add multiple tracks to represent different categories of the construction. For this phase, I will add a construction vehicle such as this mixer truck here. Also, I like to hide everything in the scene and only make the construction vehicle visible. Then I can resize this and position it wherever I want, and this will affect the construction process that I already have in place. And the cool thing is that this will automatically update in my video as well. Pretty cool, huh? Number 2. New Smart Construction Vehicles Like you saw in the previous part, there are new construction vehicles that have been added to the library. The old construction vehicles have been replaced with higher quality versions which you can customize the color and you can add your company's logo as well. There are normal versions and animated versions as well which can help your scene look more lively. With these new construction vehicles and the new phasing tool, you can create amazing construction time lapses like this one. Number 3. New Smart Aircrafts There are several new aircrafts that have been added to the library. These are big upgrades from the previous one because they can be customized to be any color. You can change the color of different parts to create some really unique airplanes. In addition, you can also personalize it more by adding a decal to it, then upload your own logo. This method allows you to create your own branded airplane, which is pretty awesome. If you want to learn more about decals, then check out my video on that topic. And if you're doing a night scene, then you can turn on the lights. Pretty cool, huh? When creating a custom aircraft, I like to rename the decal and place it inside the aircraft. Then I can save it to my user library so I can use it later. Also, if I have a custom path setup, then I can load my custom airplane onto this path like so to make it look like it's flying. Pretty cool, huh? Number 4. New Trees The new update has added 15 new trees focusing in the East Asia region. Similar to other existing trees in the library, each of the new trees comes with 4 seasons and 3 ages. With these new trees, you can create the perfect environment for your project. Number 5. Animators In the new update, there are new objects called animators, which allow you to link any object to a rotator or a translator to animate your own custom objects such as doors, windows, elevators, etc. Note that there are also presets that are included such as a roundabout, a lifting barrier, an initial gate, and a retractable baller. First, I will use a rotator to create an animated door. 
I will place it at this corner of the door. Now I can click on the link button and click on the door. You can see that in the scene graph, the door frame is now attached to the rotator. Next, click on the door glass to link it as well. The next button is the unlink button in case you want to unlink an object from the rotator. This is basically the opposite of the link button. Finally, the pivot edit button allows you to readjust the pivot point. You can see that the object rotates around the blue line, which represents the axis. If you want to move the whole object instead, then you can still move it with the move tool. Below you can see the different settings such as speed, There are several animations options that you can choose from, such as loop, ones, and ping pong. You can also adjust the delay between each repetition here. If I set it to one second, then there's a one second delay between each repetition. And here you can adjust the angle of the door swing. If you click on more, you can choose the axis of rotation. This will determine the direction that the object rotates. Next is the trigger. If it's turned on, then the rotator will only activate if it's triggered when these objects are nearby, which you can further customize if you like. You can also adjust the trigger zone, which determines the distance where the rotator will activate. In this case, when you come within this zone, the door will open. Finally, the play button is to turn it on or off, which I will leave it off and move to the sliding door. Let's add a translator to this corner of the sliding door. Here you can see the blue line, which represents the axis where the translator will move. But we want it to move horizontally, not vertically, so I can press tab to go to the rotate tool and rotate it 90 degrees like so. You can select the rotate tool here as well. Next. We need to link the door to the translator. But if we look at the scene graph, you can see that the door has lots of parts. So instead, we can move the whole folder inside the translator. And that looks good. For these settings, they are similar to the rotator, except the distance setting, which determines the distance the object will move. There we go. With this in mind, you can create an immersive environment when doing walkthroughs with your clients. Note that you can use the animators for many different things, such as automatic shades, windmills, windows, and retractable screens. Number six, parametric and interactive doors. Instead of manually creating interactive doors with the animators, you can use one of the doors in a new collection of parametric door assets. These include single doors, double doors, sliding doors, and pocket doors. First, I can delete or hide the existing door, then drag one of these parametric doors in its place. The cool thing is that the door will automatically fit into the existing opening. Alternatively, you can adjust the width and height of the door in its settings. In addition, there are several styles that you can choose from. All of these can be customized even further. If you click on more, you can choose the handle style, turn hinges off or on, and choose the casing style. You can even adjust the width and thickness of the casing here. Next, you can choose the behavior of the door, which determines whether the door is open, close, or trigger. This means that if I move closer to the door, then the door will automatically open. Similar to the animator, you can customize the trigger radius, the trigger type, and the delay. Next, you can choose whether the handle placement is right-handed or left-handed. 
If you click on more, you can choose the direction of the door swing to outward or inward. And here you can customize the swing angle. Finally, you can adjust the framing of the door here, which you can customize even more in here. This allows you to create many different styles of doors, and of course, you can always switch back to one of the presets. These doors already have materials applied, but they can easily be replaced just like any other imported objects in your scene. As you can see, these doors are a great addition to the Twinmotion library, especially when navigating through your scene. Number 7. New Water Material In the new update, the water material has been greatly improved. There are now lots of settings for the water such as the color, the water depth, turbidity, which determines the cloudiness or haziness of the water. The next two settings control the size and intensity of the caustics, which are caused by light rays being reflected and refracted by the water. There are also many settings to control the waves, such as the amount, the wave size, the flow direction, flow speed, and wind guts. With these settings, you can customize your own water material, or you can use the existing presets in the library to create more realistic lakes, ponds, pools, and rivers for your scene. Also, the last setting will let you choose whether the water is affected by the season by turning it on or off. With it turned on, the water will become frozen in the winter, which is super cool. Get it? Super cool? Because it's frozen? Yeah. Finally, number 8 is the improved puddle effect. Now when you adjust the weather to create rain, the new puddle effect will make the surfaces in your model look wetter and make your rainy scenes look more realistic. And those are the new features for Twinmotion 2020.2. If you want to get Twinmotion, then follow this link here. That's all for today guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and comment below and let me know what you think of the new version. Stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.